Cumberland Gap is in the far southwest corner of Virginia, where it meets Tennessee and Kentucky. It formed a natural passageway through the mountains for the early settlers. I'm David. And I'm Brad. And I'm Alfonso. And I'm Frank. And, and we're, we're Virginia, Virginia Trekkers. Trekkers. And we're here today at the Cumberland Gap. The Cumberland Gap is located in the Valley and Ridge region in Virginia. It was a very important passageway for the early settlers. It took us over seven hours of driving to get here, but we wanted to make sure that you guys got to see the Cumberland Gap in your classroom. There's a bunch of things to see, so if you're ready to get trekking, let's get trekking! Let's, let's go! go. Right. Hey boys and girls, here we are along the Wilderness Trail. This is the trail that the um, settlers, early settlers came on. And this trail actually started off as a buffalo trail, a game trail that the buffalo would take across the mountains. And then the Indians used that same trail. It was called the Great Warrior's Path, and then the settlers um, continued along it. So here's a real live buffalo. You can see on this map how the passage through the Cumberland Gap started as a buffalo trail. The Indians followed that same trail and called it the Great Warrior's Path. Next, the Scotch-Irish and German settlers used it and named it the Great Wagon Road. But their wagons could not cross the gap at this time, so they went south. It wasn't until Daniel Boone widened the Wilderness Road that settlers began to use it to move into Kentucky and regions west of Virginia. Now there's a tunnel right through the mountains, so we don't even need to use the Cumberland Gap anymore. Hey boys and girls, here we have a pictograph. You see Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, bordering states. You can see the pioneers came westward, Virginia to Kentucky, and then the products eastward to the markets where people can buy. And they come right on back. This gap made it easy to go back and forth instead of having to go over the mountains, which is about uh, 800 miles long and 150 miles wide. That was a bit much. This plaque is a marker along the Daniel Boone Trail, and thanks to him, over 200,000 settlers crossed the Cumberland Gap. Here we are in the actual Wilderness Trail. This is the trail that the pioneers took through the mountains to get over to Kentucky and Tennessee. And it was actually, um, pa the, Daniel Boone paved the way for this trail in 1775. Him and a group of, um, they were called long hunters because they spent long hours in the woods hunting. They came and they cut down trees and made the path wider for the settlers so that they could um, take their journey west. Hey boys and girls, as we're hiking, you're gonna notice some of the trees. When we were at the Blue Ridge Mountains and the leaves were falling, we called those deciduous trees. You notice in the Blue Ridge Mountains there was a lot of deciduous trees. We didn't see a lot of evergreens. This part of the mountain, you're gonna notice a whole lot more evergreens. The climate tends to be a little bit colder and the evergreens like to have colder weather. So take a peek. Some of you might find this a little bit gross, but I think it's pretty cool. Stumbling across a whole bunch of these black ball things here, and it's hair. It's obviously animal hair, but if we look really closely, there's a jawbone and a spine and a foot or a, a hand, uh, all the bones to so a foot or a hand right there. So what that means is some animal ate this, maybe an owl, maybe a fox and their bodies digested everything that it could use for, to make energy so it could survive. And the hair and the bones could not be used, so either the animal had it come up this way or the other way. Have you guys seen Brad? Oh. Have you guys seen Brad? I hope that's not Brad. <laughs> oh my gosh. See boys and girls, having to climb up the mountains it's a little bit difficult. This is just a small hill. That's why they needed to find some type of gap, an easier way of travel to get the folks in and even get their goods out. And boys and girls, up here in the mountains, you can hear, there's an echo! Because you know your sound waves are bouncing back and forth off the mountain walls. Here you can see how an echo works. When Dave yelled, the sound waves bounced off the mountains and came back to him, so he heard his voice again, again. Another science lesson we found at the Gap was the moon. This particular moon is showing the moon phase of the first quarter. It almost looks like just like half of a moon. When you're learning about your eight different moon phases, first quarter is definitely going to be on there, so take a good look. 
Let's review those moon phases. There's the new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, and waning crescent. I decided to come up on this at Rock Outcrop so you guys could see the view. Absolutely beautiful. Even though you see mountains in the background, you need to remember that we are in the ridge and valley region of Virginia. Now just imagine having to walk with all your belongings, animals, and family up through the valley and then up and through the Cumberland Gap. The Virginia Trekkers, we are complaining about our seven hour car ride, but I would rather take a seven hour car ride than have to hike with all my stuff through the Cumberland Gap. Boys and girls, this is Brad, and as you can remember, I had a little bit of trouble in the Natural Bridge area with heights. As you can see, I am fully cured here in the, in the Cumberland Gap. You guys talk about weathering and erosion and science. Here are some great examples of that here in the Cumberland Gap in the mountains. When water freezes, it, it expands, which means that the land that the mountains is formed on is going to expand, causing the mountain or the land to break apart, which is called weathering. Once this piece of land breaks apart, if it is carried away by water or wind or other animals like this, that's called erosion because the rocks are being removed from a certain area. So weathering is the breaking of rocks and erosion is the carrying away of rocks. And as you can tell, erosion causes lots of different shapes and formations here in the Cumberland Gap. Yeah. And fifth graders, you learn all about plate movements and different kind of boundaries between the plates. Well, the Appalachian um, Mountain was formed by convergent plates. They came together and went up over many years. And you can tell that happened because look at these rocks. They're kind of slanted that way, aren't they? So they started out level, and then when the convergent boundaries pushed them together, they kind of formed a slant. In this animation, you can see how a convergent boundary creates mountains. When the Earth's plates come together or collide, they push up the land and form mountains, like the Appalachian Mountains. Hey boys and girls, after a big hike up the mountain, we've reached the Tri-State Monument. Remember, Tri means three, so we're standing in three different states, and I'm lucky enough to be standing in our home state of Virginia, the tenth state of the United States, also known as the Old Dominion. And I'm standing in the northeast corner of the state of Kentucky. Kentucky was the 15th state to enter the United States in 1792, and its state nickname is the Bluegrass State. And I happen to be standing here at our 16th state. Do you happen to know what it is? It's also called the Volunteer State, the great state of Tennessee. And I'm standing in all three states at the same time because at this exact point, the three states' boundaries meet. And here's a special marker showing, uh, it's a survey marker showing that this is where the three states connect. Boys and girls, we've placed our camera right on the survey mark that indicates where the three states join together. Do you remember what the three states were? Mine was Tennessee. Mine was Virginia. And mine was Kentucky. So which states are missing? Stay tuned at the end of the podcast to find out. We showed you the bordering states, but what makes a border? Often, lines of latitude form borders. The equator is a line of latitude. A 30 degree angle forms the 30 degrees north line. A 60 degree angle forms the 60 degrees north line. And a 90 degree angle points to the North Pole. So if we zoom in on Virginia, we see that the southern border is formed by a line of latitude, 36 degrees north. Our eastern border is crooked because it is formed by water, the Atlantic Ocean, the Chesapeake Bay, and the Potomac River. Our western border is crooked too, but it's not formed by water this time. Let's zoom in and take a look. As you can see here, mountains form Virginia's western border. While we're over here at the peak, uh, as you look behind me, you're going to see Tennessee. Well, walk with me here in this direction. Welcome to Kentucky. All of that space is Kentucky. As we continue to walk in this direction, welcome to Virginia. 
pretty cool being able to visit three states in a matter of 20 seconds. Boys and girls, as you learn the names of the five different regions in Virginia, it sometimes is hard to figure out how the regions got the names that we are learning. Here's a great example of how the Valley and Ridge region got its name. If you look at the picture, if you look at our landscape, our landforms, there's a, the valley in the middle and you have ridges of mountains on both sides. So here's a great example for you to see back in your classrooms of how the Valley and Ridge region really got its name and why we call it the Valley and Ridge. Say Valley and Ridge one more time. Boys and girls, the Trekkers hope that you really enjoyed your tour of the Cumberland Gap. And the Trekkers really want you to remember that the Cumberland Gap is in the Valley and Ridge region. We didn't drive out of here seven hours from Richmond just to make a Cumberland Gap podcast. Make sure that you're checking VirginiaTrekkers.com for the other podcasts that we made while we're on this trip. And now the Trekkers are heading over to Kentucky to get some food and sleep. Stay tuned for our next podcast. And keep on trekking. At the Cumberland Gap, we saw two bordering states. Can you identify all the bordering states of Virginia? There's North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Maryland. Play our flash game for more practice.